It's been quite a journey for Bahrain because it used to be considered the go-to regional hub for finance. Uh, then it went through quite a bit of a reform process. What can you offer uh, to close the gap to a place like Dubai and at the same time keep new competition at bay? We still have about 400 financial institutions based here in the country. A uh, big component of that is Islamic finance. So we continue to focus on growing our Islamic financing hub, uh, continuing to play to our strengths. Um, and financial technology, which I think is disrupting the entire financial industry, is an area that we've chosen because we have a, a focus on technology to say how can financial technology use Bahrain as a home. And so I think we've seen certainly great reception from investors to base their financial technology companies in the country. Um, and we want to grow that. I mean, how would you benchmark success in the fintech area? And how do you put in place reforms to make it as competitive as you'd like it to be? Because the reality is you're playing on a, on a, global, on a global platform. Well, we benchmark it by looking at the number of companies we attract here. It's a simple metric. And we're seeing about 35 companies in our sandbox right now. Uh, that went from zero, basically, a year and a half ago. We're seeing about three or four graduating onto the onshore regulatory uh, platform. We're seeing uh, regulation coming out on cryptocurrency exchanges just last Thursday, robo-advisory coming out soon. We're seeing companies from, again, the United Kingdom, Amsterdam, the United States. So clearly, we're playing in a global world, and we're seeing investment and entry from uh, you know, places from around the globe. So that tells us that we're doing the right things. What about demand from China? How is that holding up? There's been a little bit of anxiety in the last few months around the momentum in the Chinese economy. What are you seeing in terms of interest and in terms of capital flows? I spent two weeks in China just last November. Um, and I do that every year, but I spent probably a longer time uh, you know, a couple months ago. I'm amazed at the level of technology. And in fintech specifically, I think China is well ahead of, of most countries in the world. We've seen tremendous flows, again, not just in fintech, e-commerce. There are Chinese companies looking at e-commerce platforms, fulfillment centers. We're seeing payment platforms. So we have seen three companies already in the registration phase in Bahrain. And we have an office in Beijing. We've opened an office in Shenzhen. Uh, so we think China has tremendous potential. Of course, we still have a focus on Europe mm -hmm. and the United States. But uh, I'm very positive on Chinese uh, inward investment. How have the geopolitics of the region affected some of your ambitions? Uh, these are difficult times. Uh, there's been quite a bit of anxiety around Saudi Arabia. You still have ongoing issues in Yemen and in Syria as well. Uh, if you compare that to previous years and how that affects uh, demand from foreign investors to put capital to work in, in Bahrain, how would, how would you compare it? Well, I, look, I look at what is happening in Saudi Arabia in the, in, in the Vision 2030, and it's a huge net positive. Just the reforms, the pace of change, capturing supply chains in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the benefits that will have on the entire area. Um, so I look at that as a net positive. You know, conflict is not new to this part of the world. We've had conflicts almost you know, continuously over the last 20 and 30 years. And I always say investors look at certainly the Gulf, weigh the risks with the payoffs, and it's always been the case that the benefits outweigh the costs. And so I uh, continue to be very positive. And I think, again, we're seeing record flows in Bahrain. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw $830 million of FDI into the country last year. It beat a record year we had in 2017. Over 90 companies choosing to base themselves in the country. So that tells you, again, based on yeah. numbers, that people are comfortable with the risks and they see the, you know, the benefits outweigh the risks. Here's what a lot of investors would like to know in my conversations with them, Khaled. It's it, what kind of reforms you've enacted to try and avoid the kind of situation that you were in last year when you got a bailout from some of your Gulf neighbors to the tune of about $10 billion. I mean, how has that affected the EDB's mandate, for example? Well, I, I wouldn't call it a bailout. I would say yeah. it's a support package. It's based on a strategy that the country has shared with our neighbors. And I think you've already seen the benefits of some measures that Bahrain took, the Kingdom of Bahrain took a couple of years ago. We've seen the budget deficit drop to about 6% of GDP. Um, and I think we see that dropping again a further 2% to 4% next year, and basically narrowing that deficit by uh, 2022. What's the benefits? I think we've had a great story on the economic growth front. We grew about 4% in 2017. It was the fastest growth rate in the GCC. We've seen that slow down somewhat in 2018, but still very healthy, driven by the non-oil sector. 
We've seen a great FDI inflow story that I mentioned to you mm -hmm. earlier. Record FDI in 2017, record FDI in 2018. The one drag has been the fiscal story. And now we're seeing, again, with the GCC support package and with the measures the government has taken, that we have a very positive story on the fiscal front. Yeah. So I look at that, suddenly we're seeing alignment on economic growth, on FDI, on fiscal, and I think that spells you know, a green light for investors. I mean, as you look to the future, you talked a little bit about your fintech ambitions, but when you look at the, the, the complete story of, of what the EDB is trying to do, what's going to be the catalyst for a lot of the inflows and a lot of the foreign investors that are going to come to the shores of Bahrain? Is it going to come from China? Is it going to come from the West, the United States and, and Europe? I mean, what's going to be your, dri your primary driver of, of demand? The GCC is, is okay. one source. We look at the GCC, our neighbors, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, the UAE. These are investors who know us, who know the region, and can utilize Bahrain as a further outreach of their, uh, of their base. So we look at the GCC, and it's a big source of FDI. India, right next door to us, shared culture, proximity. Uh, so that's a focus for us. We look at the United Kingdom, again, within Europe. Uh, I think the United Kingdom is beginning to establish its own trade relations after Brexit or while they're going through Brexit. So I think the United Kingdom could be a source of FDI. And then beyond that, we have presence in China, uh, in the wider Asia region, in the United States, both the West Coast and the East Coast. So we are not saying we're going to put all our eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. We have a value proposition. We want to reach out to investors. We want to spell out that value proposition. But I would say that the GCC is just as important a component, our next door neighbors, as the rest of the world.